Welcome to GeoInteresting, presented by the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. President Obama signed an executive order in January 2015 to enhance coordination of the national efforts in the Arctic. NGA collaborated with outside experts and developed digital elevation models of the Arctic that were released earlier this year. During his recent trip to Alaska, President Obama announced the NGA National Science Foundation collaborative effort. The audio you're about to hear was provided by C-SPAN. And to help Alaskans better plan for sustainable development, the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency and the National Science Foundation are leading a public-private collaboration to create the first ever publicly available high-resolution satellite-based elevation map of Alaska by next year and the entire Arctic by the year after that so that we know exactly what's taking place all across this great state. NGA and the National Science Foundation relied on experts in academia and in science to assist in researching and mapping the Arctic, Alaska, and its surrounding areas. Part of that effort was Paul Morin, director of the Polar Geospatial Center at the University of Minnesota. Morin was able to sit down with us and answer some questions about the project. Stay tuned for GeoInteresting. So let's just start with the background mm -hmm. on how the uh, NGA and Polar Geospatial Center linked up. Sure. Um, so we've, I've been director of a relatively small um, science support, science and logistics support center at the University of Minnesota um, for probably about, it's about nine years now. And in the second year, we were in Antarctica collecting ground control in a place called the Dry Valley. So this is one of the beautiful places on Earth. And so I got back out, found that in the two weeks I was in the field, um, my mailbox had filled up. <laughs> and my program officer at the National Science Foundation said, did you get this email? And the email was to me saying, if you had access to submeter commercial imagery, would you know what to do with it? The answer is always yes. And uh, so what would you say is unique about a partnership like this with an IC agency and the public? We're scientists. We talk for a living. You know, it's all, you know, we're supposed to go out and, you know, the people I work with have tenure. They have tenure because they're supposed to upset people for a living. <laughs> they're supposed to discover things and go on television and write papers and do whatever it takes to, to market that idea mm -hmm. to not only the public but to their own colleagues you guys don't do that you guys are basically a combat support organization you uh, collect imagery you solve geospatial problems that a handful of people ever see and what's unusual is um, in, in this relationship um, you guys you know NGA has access to this extraordinary high quality high resolution high frequency submeter imagery but we're interested in all the places you're not interested in my organization of about 12 people in the basement of the livestock pavilion in the st paul campus mm -hmm. of the <laughs> university of minnesota is basically a mini version of nga mm -hmm. all we really do is we solve geospatial problems we solve problems with a lat long Sometimes it's making a map, sometimes it's remote sensing, sometimes it's some kind of geospatial analysis, but the application's just different. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's the same tools, it's the same imagery. You know, the, 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 you know we may be looking at um, uh, trees or ice or coastline or something like that, where, where an NGA analyst may be looking at um, you know, some other hot spot around the world. We do the same things. That's really cool. It's cool to see the that intersection illustrated in the open source um, well, and commercial that's a, well, and succeeding that's, in the open, as our director likes to say. Exactly. And that's, remember that, um, you know, science is by nature open source. This is what we do. We are funded by the U.S. government to find things out and to give it away. So tell us about 
uh, some or one of the projects uh, or problems well, you're currently or your students I mean, are the, working on? The big one right now is we're producing an elevation model for the Arctic. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so NGA and, and contractors have been collecting this imagery for us. And we had this opening where we had the imagery and the software. And it turns out that NSF, the National Science Foundation, has some of the largest supercomputing in the world. And so what we did was organized two agencies, five scientists, six universities, um, the, the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy, program officers all across the board, mm -hmm. and came up with enough computer time on top of it to be able to process all this imagery. So we've gone from a time when you're flying an airplane and you could get you know, a county every few days, too. Mm -hmm. We're collecting the equivalent of about California once a day. With the small sets and everything. Well, not with small sets yet. These are all with Worldview 1, 2, and 3. Mm. But we're, we're, you know, this isn't LIDAR, but we have nothing in these places. And for most of the world, we have very, very poor topography. It's only in a developed country, uh, you know, the U.S., Western Europe, Japan, something like that, or in a trouble spot where you're going to have this data. Mm -hmm. With these resources, with the open source software, the commercial imagery, and massive computing, we can create a uniform quality, high quality, publicly available data set with a U.S. science agency and NGA. The, the imagery is being used um, to, to look at mass balance, just how much... Uh, ice there is there at any one time and you know as it snows and as new ice is created is that topography going up or down you know, one of the key things here is that not only the imagery is 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 critical but topography is perhaps the most important of all data sets for earth science and uh, and what are some of your next steps in in all your efforts uh, where do you and where do you see um, the relationship of NGA and Polar Geospatial Center in the future. Yeah, I mean, the you know, um, the relationship really is between NGA and NSF. The Polar Geospatial Center, we're, we make things and do things, and we facilitate. Mm -hmm. But we started the Antarctic now, so we're producing the elevation model of the Antarctic. And, you know, when we're done with both the Arctic and the Antarctic, we'll have topography of over 95% of all ice on Earth mm -hmm. when we're done with that. Where I see this going is the, the natural place for it to go is more and more scientists want access to this imagery. And we need to find ways of effectively passing on um, these resources that were licensed for the good of the U.S. federal government. And it's a challenge because, um, you know, NASA builds instruments, builds rockets, launches it all, maintains it in orbit, and does science. Mm -hmm. The National Science Foundation generally it provides, you know, infrastructure for peer review, and then they write checks to get science done. Mm. We're an anomaly in there where we're a center that provides services to those people. And so, you know, there's, there's an educational process going on. There is a computer science aspect of this, just trying to get the data out. And there's just getting people used to the fact that this type of capability exists. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is new yeah. to my scientists. Right. I like how you described Described it as a mini NGA. It's we, important. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, in you know, the product of science is a publication. All we do is facilitate the production of that publication, and we facilitate it either by helping people get to a location, because we have geospatial information like imagery or other data that helps them get to that place, 
or it's imagery that's used directly to measure something that's used to produce science that's documented in the paper. Mm -hmm. That's all we do. And so if you were to just move a couple of those words around and talk about you know, intelligence and combat support, you could, you could have used my, my paragraph from a moment ago. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. National and security. National security and science. Mm -hmm. We still have to measure the earth. We still have a, uh, have a currency issue where we need to know what something looks like now. Yeah. Anything else to add? No. I, well, I mean, the, the, the takeaway here is what NGA does here, how they have um, reached out to us and the science community ch has changed things. Um, Science is different now than when I started doing this mm -hmm. eight years ago. And it's different in part because of the contribution of NGA. And I, you know, in a way I could say inadvertent. And I don't really mean that. What I, what I mean is um, the people here are doing the right thing. Um, NGA's mission is NGA's mission, but when it's possible, we've been able to, to, to use some of these resources for U.S. federally funded science. And, and, you know, what's happening tomorrow is we're bringing in a number of people to talk about this. And they're coming in to, in essence, to, to, to explain what they're doing. But above all, just say thank you. Oh, I mean, this is, this is extraordinary. I mean, we've got people flying in for just a few hours from L.A. and, you know, from UCLA, from University of Michigan, University of Colorado, University of Illinois. Um, we've got two people coming from the Office of Science and Technology Policy and three people coming from NSF. It's, this is important to us. Mm -hmm. And we want to make sure that everybody knows what's going on because we can talk about it. <laughs> yeah, and what what exactly are you briefing tomorrow to well, the director? Well, we're at we're Ops part Intel? of the yeah at the mm -hmm. Ops Intel. Mm -hmm. We're we're talking about exactly this. Mm -hmm. You know, um, what it? everyone's using the commercial imagery for. We'll talk a bit about Arctic DEM, and we'll talk about how this has transformed the way that we're seeing the world, how we're doing earth science, how we're doing biology and glaciology. Yeah, um, uh, Marin Clark from University of Michigan is coming in. She's using this to look at at landslides in Nepal. Mm. There is no alternative for this. It's too expensive to fly aircraft, Landsat, some of the other NASA um, uh, spacecraft can't see at the resolution she needs to see. Mm -hmm. She also can't get elevation. It's too expensive to go in with LIDAR. But you know, with keystrokes and some email and, and, you know, some clever grad students, we can get quite a bit done. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I could talk to you all day. No. Well, yeah. <laughs> I think that's a good place to, to end. Yeah. For now. That's right. Maybe we'll do a part two, three. A absolutely. Yeah. So I think this is so cool, especially when the Dems um, came out and they were all colorful. Right. And, oh, man, that's so great. Yeah. So. Yeah, that was, you don't get that very often, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and the stars aligned on that one and, um, you know, aligned to the point where, you know, my deal with Claire now is the next planet we do has to be smaller. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, you know, there, there, there become a lot of um, um, stakeholders in this and, you know, until you can get through the really... Um, public aspects of it, you know, it's only now that we can really get down and just produce this thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, that's an, that was an interesting, um, interesting time. You know, when when President Obama said elevation model, and it's like he's using a word. He's using <laughs> that, those are the words we use. <laughs> he's one of us. Pretty cool. And he said it above the Arctic Circle. Too Interesting is produced by NGA's Office of Corporate Communications. Never miss an episode by subscribing on SoundCloud or iTunes. 
You can also like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and visit us at www.nga.mail. Thanks for listening. Thank you.